we have now a clear solution and a precipitate at the bottom of the test tube. Now, if I bring it close and rotate, you should be able to see the white precipitate and the clear solution. To test for complete precipitation, we want to make sure that there is no cation left in the solution. If I'm adding the reagent that I used before, which is HCl, I add one extra drop to it and to see if new precipitate forms. If new precipitate forms, the solution part, the clear solution part would turn cloudy again. If it does not turn cloudy, that means the precipitation is complete and the amount of HCl I added earlier was enough. So at this point, I'm going to, I do not need the centrifuge again. I do prefer. Hi, Dr. Mamari again. Uh, this experiment is about the chemical kinetics. So we are using one of the iodine clock reactions to study the, the kinetic of a reaction. And basically at the end of the experiment, we should be able to write a rate law for this reaction. Um, based on the rate law, we could say the order of each reactant, the rate, the rate of the reaction, how it's going to change uh, if you can't change the concentration of one of the uh, reactants and find out if it's direct relationship, this one-to-one -one is going to be uh, first order, or if you double the concentration, the rate changes, it quadruples, then we have second order. For the theory of the reaction, you should watch the pre-lab discussion video, which will be, it's, uh, which is posted in the module. Um, but I have to explain now while I'm doing the experiment, uh, so you know what type of experiments we are doing. The reaction is between sulfurous acid and uh, potassium iodate. So iodate ion and sulfurous acid go through oxidation reduction type reaction. One of the products that is formed here is elemental iodine. And elemental iodine forms a complex with starch, and it gives like a blue, dark blue color um, as the indication that enough iodine has been produced. If we change the concentration of the reactant from one trial to another trial, we can track and find using a stopwatch how long did it take for the reaction to happen if we had concentration of A for iodate or concentration of B for iodate. We are going to test this with like five different concentration for iodate. We keep the concentration of sulfurous acid, acid constant and we change the concentration of iodate ion so we can build and construct a calibration curve. Then I'm going to have the unknown iodate solution and test it and based on the time of the reaction, using calibration curve, we can find the concentration of that. With the five reactions that you are doing, or the six reactions that you are doing for the different concentration, uh, you can use to find the order for the reaction, the order for the rate law with respect to first reactant and with respect to reactant two. The setup that you see here, the burette, because I wanna measure proper and accurate volume uh, for the reactants. Uh, I have two choices: either I use pipette or I use burette. Burette is a good setting when the whole class is here. So everyone can just dispense the, the, the volume required based on the table that's given in the procedure and, and move on. It kind of saves time and also we are using accurate uh, measurements. I'm using graduate cylinder for water and I'm using graduate cylinder for starch. I measure to, you know, to the best of the accuracy that provided by graduate cylinder, but is not as accurate as burette, of course. So I just want to show you a sample. I already did my measurements based on the table provided in the procedure, but I want to show you like how fast and how quick it's going to be. Like if I want to get five milliliters of the sulfurous acid, the label and the burette is says sulfurous acid. This would be the for class setting. I just dispense uh, five milliliter. I go from 40 to 45, and I stop at 45. That shows that I have dispensed the uh, uh, exactly five milliliter. When the meniscus aligns with the 45, I have five milliliter of sulfurous acid in the in the beaker, and then I move on. 
And for the starch, I just use the graduate cylinder. I measure five milliliters and I pour five mil up to like enough to make again the meniscus aligned with the five milliliter exactly. If I need to adjust more, I can use dropper, but it, I was lucky and it got right on the spot uh, five milliliters. So I have five milliliters of starch. For the water, I use the graduate cylinder, as I said. And based on the based on the recipe, if it tells me 75 milliliter, I would stop at 75 milliliter and I add 75 milliliter. So that's how I prepare my beakers, and they're all labeled the exact volume of each compound that goes in each of the, the beakers is presented in the um, in a table in the procedure. I have one that is labeled capital A. And the table says what is in there, and we have the lowercase a. So I have the iodate solution in this speaker, and I have the sulfurous acid with the starch solution and water in the other other beaker. When I mix it, as soon as I mix it, I will start the timing. The reason I explain more this time versus other experiments, because I may not get enough time. It might take only 10 seconds for the reaction, so I don't have time to explain it. What you need to do, you need to watch the, the, the stopwatch, record that number so you have a number for your table to complete the data sheet and to do the calculation. I will make sure to stop and show you the stopwatch so you could see the number for you to record it. There would be no recorded and written value for you. You are watching me doing the experiment, but you are going to focus on the stopwatch to record the number for each trial. So please keep track of each experiment and see the timing corresponds to which mixture. Okay, let's go ahead and start the, um, the experiment. Before doing that, I want to make sure that I know how to use the stopwatch. So I will just uh, start, uh, make sure that it's on, um, start and um, stop. So I know how it works and that's the, you know, Reset for zero, start and, and stop. I will bring it to you like this for you to record it. I try to make sure that it's not, you know, reflection of the light. I would change the angle a couple of times to make sure that you get, you can, you can see the number and that's all I can do, okay? But you are responsible for recording the numbers. Okay. So we have all the solutions for a, a, this is a separate trial, but is the same, following the same procedure, we have all the solutions ready. We have the sulfurous acid, starch and water in test tube labeled capital A, and same thing for B, C, D, E, and F, and lowercase a has the iodate solution. Concentration of the iodate solution is going to be different from one trial to another trial, uh, except for B and F that are the same. B and F concentration of the, the iodate solution is going to be the same, but for I'm changing the concentration of the sulfurous acid to see how the concentration, changing concentration of the sulfurous acid will change the rate of the reaction. So at this point, we are going to mix and as soon as the liquids touch each other, uh, I would try to start the, the timer and we are going to, uh, to start all of them at the same time or one right after the other one because we have the luxury of having all these six timers. For students who are working in the lab, we, they have one timer, each experiment has to, uh, which trial is to finish before they can start the next trial. So I'm going to start with the mixing A with A. And as soon as this is mixed, I'm going to start timing. B and start timing. D with D and timing. Mixing 
E, equal E with E and timing. Letter F with lowercase f and timing. And the unknown. We prepared following the procedure, we prepared the unknown and timing. Now, about the mixing, as long as you are consistent, we are fine because mixing is one of the factors that affects the rate of the reaction. We don't want to mix two factors. We want to be consistent with one of them. So as long as I'm consistent with the mixing, so you saw that as soon as I mix, uh, I, I mix the two solution, I, use, I stir. So the stirring part, it has to be consistent. If I stir the first one, I have to continuously go and stir to the, to the last one and with the same rate. And this is going to help us to get consistent rate uh, for the reaction. We are going to wait. And as soon as one turns blue color, we would record and stop the, um, stop the um, timer. So I have the timer for one of the letters, letter, letter F for now is stopped. And we are waiting for the rest of them uh, to happen. Okay, A also turned, so I'm going to stop the timer for A, and uh, the timers are stopped. I, I want to be, you know, when I start showing, I want you, it's, it's going to be easier for you to record the numbers if I just show one after the other, because I'm talking in between. But so far I have the A and, and F. For A, we have higher concentration of the, um, higher concentration for sulfurous acid. And I'm sorry, so higher concentration for iodate ion. And for F, we have high concentration for both sulfurous acid and for the, uh, uh, for the iodate. That's why it was the fastest because it has high concentration of both reactants. If it takes too long, I'm going to pause the video and then continue with this when all the reactions, okay, C reactants. Okay, now that they all changed the blue color and here's the dark blue color that you would see um, as a result of the reaction, we are going to record the time for each trial. So for combination of AA, I'm trying to change the angle so you could see it better. Um, so it's not blurry, record your number. This is for AA, okay, there's only three, numbers and then two decimal place. So that would read like 118 and 0 0.01 seconds. For VB, um, it took 193 seconds and 33 or 0.33. So you record that number, okay. For C, we got 181. Um, somehow the time for C was lower than the, the B. I'm not changing it at this point, but keep that in mind. You look for the best fitted line for a straight line when you are plotting your calibration curve. So that is, I could see that is, is not going to fit in the line, but that line is not just a good point. It's okay, and I don't want to change the numbers. I repeated twice, but both times it came out slightly higher than the, the um, C. For D, we have 260, but everything else looks perfect though. Uh, 260.55, that's for D. For E, we have 400 and 55.86, 
seconds. That's for E. For letter F, is a 53. This is the uh, this is the one that I added uh, 16 milliliter of the sulfurous acid. Is a 53 seconds. This took place very fast because it has the highest volume of the sulfurous acid, acid, and that is 53, correction, is a 53.22 second. And we have our unknown. Our unknown took 388.39 seconds. So 388.39 um, seconds for the unknown. So for the uh, first five, you are going to plot the, for A through E, you are going to use the data to plot the calibration curve. Uh, for F, you are using this for the, um, for effect of the sulfurous acid and the procedure would explain about more about calculation. The pre-lab discussion will explain more about the, the calculation also. But at this point, just make sure you record your numbers, the time for the action for each of the trial um, carefully. Perfect.